Welcome back to Move 37 at the School of AI. And now it's time to reveal the final secrets to solve slippery, drunken grid world using dynamic programming. By this point, you should thoroughly understand the Bellman equation and how it works in both deterministic and stochastic environments. If you don't, be sure to go back and review my previous videos. If you recall, we learned how the equation worked but ran into a sticky catch-22 when we tried to solve it. In the stochastic environment, in order to find the value of a square, you need to know the values of the surrounding squares. And in order to find the values of the surrounding squares, you need to know the value of the original square. This is where dynamic programming comes in. You'll recall from my first video that dynamic programming is a method of solving problems by breaking them into simpler subproblems and solving those through recursion. I'm not going to explain all there is to know about dynamic programming because Siraj already has an excellent video which explains all the different algorithms and real world use cases. I'll put a link below in case you want to dig deeper and watch it. So how do we short circuit this catch-22 that has us in an infinite recursion loop? We're going to create what's called a lookup table to estimate the value of each state. It doesn't matter whether it's initialized to zero or random values. We're simply going to replace the V of S recursion at the end of our Bellman equation with a call to the lookup table. Then we're going to use an iterative algorithm to loop through all possible states over and over again, applying the Bellman equation with the lookup table to improve the accuracy of our value calculations. In reinforcement learning, we're looking to solve two problems. First, the prediction problem. In other words, we need to calculate accurate values for each possible state. Second, there's the control problem where we need to find the optimal policy which leads to the highest expected rewards. These two go hand in hand and often depend on each other to reach an optimal solution when we have imperfect data about the environment we're in. Similarly, there are two classes of dynamic programming algorithms to solve this problem. Policy iteration and value iteration. Policy iteration starts out with a totally random policy and starts taking actions. It then starts estimating values for each square based on the reward received from these random actions, updating the value table, and using improved values to calculate improved policy. This continues until both the policy and value table stabilize and stop changing. Another way to say this is that our algorithm converges. Value iteration completely ignores policy and focuses on applying the Bellman equation exactly as we learned it to perfectly calculate values for each square. We can then calculate a perfect policy in one pass for each state by finding the action with the highest expected value. At this time, we're only going to focus on value iteration because it's the simplest. We've already learned the equation for it, and it also happens to converge the fastest. Here's an overview of our algorithm. One. We initialize a table V of value estimates for each square with all zeros. Two, we loop over every possible state S. Three, from state S, we loop over every possible action A. Four, we get a list of all probability reward state prime transition tuples from state S, action A. Five, we set expected reward to the sum of all possible rewards multiplied by their probabilities. Six, we set expected value to what we look up for V state prime for each possible state prime multiplied by the probability and all added together. Seven, we set action value to the expected reward plus gamma times the expected value. Eight, we set V of S in our lookup table to the best action value found. Now this is exact application of the Bellman equation. Number nine, we, we repeat steps two through eight until the largest change in V of S between iterations is below the threshold we set. All right, now let's take a look at what this looks like in Python code. All right, first an overview of gridworld.py, which simulates our environment. The grid class runs the game, keeps track of what state we're in, what moves are legal, and issues rewards. Most of this is self-explanatory. Check move returns the next state and any reward we would get from taking a specific action in the state we're in. This is completely deterministic. 
get transition probs is where we figure out the stochastic probabilities involved in taking an action. Grid already knows what state we're in. This function takes as input the action our agent is considering and outputs a list of transition tuples. This includes the probability, the reward, and the state prime. This function called standard grid creates a pre-configured game just like we saw in the video. It takes two optional parameters. Obey prob is the probability that the agent will obey your command. 1.0 is perfectly deterministic. A value of 0.8 would set up exactly what we saw in the last video. If the command is up, the avatar will go up 80% of the time, 10% left, 10% right. Step cost forces the agent to complete quickly by applying a penalty every single step. This should be a small negative number such as negative 0.1. With no step cost, the agent will prefer the safest route to the goal, even if it takes forever. Higher step cost brings about more willingness to take risk. All right, moving on to utils.py. This file simply contains the functions to print our values in policy in neat ASCII tables. The meat of our dynamic programming algorithm is in valueiteration.py. Small enough, usually referred to as theta, is the accuracy threshold that we require for our calculated values. When the largest value change in any single iteration is less than this number, we quit and call it a day. Gamma is the discount factor we discussed extensively in the first Bellman video. And we have all possible actions up, down, left, right. The function best action value is the heart of our value iteration algorithm. It takes a reference to our grid class, the value lookup table in the current state we're in. It loops through all possible actions and for each one grabs a list of probability, reward, state prime transitions. In a loop, we sum up both the rewards multiplied by its probability and the values of each state prime multiplied by their pri probability. We keep track of the best action and value we come across and return them. This algorithm is used to calculate values where we're interested only in the value and it's also used to find the optimum policy where we're only interested in the action. The next function calculate values is the main loop we use to calculate perfect values for each state. We initialize our value lookup table with all zeros then we enter the main loop. First we save the old value so we can compare it later. We go through every non-terminal state and calculate the value of the best action using the best action value function. We update our value table. We calculate how much the value for that state changed since the last iteration and track the largest change from each iteration. Finally, we break when the biggest change delta is lower than our small enough threshold theta. And we return our table of perfectly calculated values. All right, moving down, initialize random policy does exactly what it says. It creates a blank policy of random actions for each non-terminal state. Our policy is simply a lookup table which turns a state into an action. Calculate greedy policy is where we solve our control problem. It takes a reference to our grid class and our value lookup table. It then loops over each state and calls best action value this time paying attention only to the action returned and storing it in our policy table. The main function simply sets up the grid, prints out the reward structure, then calculates perfect values and optimal policy before printing them out. Let's try this out with the obey probability set to 1.0 to verify we get the same values we calculated by hand in the first video. 0.9, all the way to 0.66 in the starting square. Looks good. Now let's try with obey prob of 0.8. Everything's almost the same except the bottom row, second column, which is now sending us left instead of right. Taking the obey prob down to 0.5, we now see our agent is trying to walk into the left wall by the lava pit instead of risking an up move. I encourage you to play around on your own by adding a step cost as a negative number and see what happens to the policy. Try negative 0.1 and then negative 0.5. At negative 0.5 you'll notice something very odd. What is it? When you spot it, put it in the comments. And at negative 2.0 it gets even stranger. 
If you want to have a really solid understanding of this concept, I encourage you to rewind to the part of this video where I explain the value optimization algorithm. Import from grid world, import from utils, but try to code the value iteration algorithm on your own without looking back to my code. All right, this is Colin Scow, and I'll see you again in the next unit. Until then, happy coding.